President-elect Donald Trump departed Mar-a-Lago on Wednesday, ahead of his meeting later with President Joe Biden at the White House. Trump is making a victor's return to Washington. Biden will welcome him to the White House for an Oval Office visit that is a traditional part of the peaceful handoff of power, a ritual that Trump himself declined to participate in four years ago. Trump also planned to meet with Republicans from Congress as they focus on his day one priorities and prepare for a potentially unified government with a GOP sweep of power in the nation's capital. His arrival amid Republican congressional leadership elections could put his imprint on the outcome. It's a stunning return to the U.S. seat of government for the former president, who departed nearly four years ago a diminished, politically defeated leader after the January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol but is preparing to come back to power with what he and his GOP allies see as a mandate for governance. His own attack was the first on Kiev in 73 days. President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Russia is intensifying its strikes, apparently in an effort to discourage Ukrainians from continuing the war, which is approaching its 1,000-day milestone. Russia appears to be pressing its advantage as doubt swirls about how Washington might change policy on the war after Donald Trump takes office as U.S. President in January. The U.S. is the biggest provider of military help to Ukraine. Trump has slammed the Biden administration for giving Kyiv tens of billions of dollars in aid and has promised to quickly end the conflict. Ukraine's international backers fear that any rushed settlement would mostly benefit Russian President Vladimir Putin. Speaking to a gathering of Jewish community groups from across North America, Israeli President Isaac Herzog congratulated President-elect Donald Trump on his election victory and thanked President Joe Biden for his friendship and support of Israel in the wake of last year's October 7 terrorist attack. As we come together in Washington, D.C., the capital of our greatest ally and friend, 101 Israeli women, children and men are still missing, Herzog said. They're being held in brutal captivity by Hamas terrorists and held for over 400 days, he said. We must use every tool at our disposal and every platform within reach to bring them back home. Herzog decried the anti-Semitic attack just days ago in Amsterdam. The city is facing tensions following violence last week targeting fans of an Israeli soccer club. Dutch police announced five new arrests Monday in their investigation into the violence. The suspects are men aged 18 to 37 and are from Amsterdam or surrounding cities. Four are still in custody, the fifth has been released but remains a suspect. Police said it was not clear who started the unrest and whether it was related to what happened last week. But they noted the tense atmosphere since five people were treated in the hospital and dozens detained Thursday following a Maccabi Tel Aviv Ajax match. Youths on scooters and on foot went in search of Israeli fans, punching and kicking them and then fleeing to evade police, according to Amsterdam's mayor. 
Herzog also described Iran and its allies as the engine behind the modern-day anti-Semitism. I call on the Iranian people, who come from a rich tradition of proud heritage and culture, to choose to rise up and change the direction to which their leaders are dragging them, Herzog said. I call on the free world to challenge the barbarism with force and conviction without fear, united with our allies, chief among them the United States of America, he said. As we come together in Washington, D.C., the capital of our greatest ally and friend, 101 Israeli women, children, and men are still missing. They have been held in brutal captivity by Hamas terrorists, enduring hell for over 400 days. We must use every tool at our disposal and every platform within reach to bring them back home, every single one. As President of the State of Israel, I congratulate President-elect Donald Trump, a champion of peace and cooperation and a great friend of Israel. In our conversation just a few days ago, following his election, we spoke of the urgent need to bring our hostages back home. President Trump reiterated his love for Israel. I thanked him for his friendship and wished him every success. I take this opportunity to express gratitude and admiration to the 46th President of the United States, my dear friend Joe Biden. I look forward to meeting with President Biden tomorrow and thanking him on behalf of the state and people of Israel for standing by us in our most difficult moment. I also thank Vice President Kamala Harris for actively voicing her solidarity with the Israeli people. The terrifying scenes from Amsterdam just a few days ago, in which Israelis and Jews ran for their lives in the heart of a European city, invoked dark images we declared never to see again. Much of the anti-Semitism which we are seeing is an evolution of the age-old hatred of Jews. But for many years now, we have seen the engine behind the modern-day anti-Semitism, the Iranian regime and its allies. I call on the Iranian people who come from a rich tradition of proud heritage and culture to choose to rise up and change the direction to which their leaders are dragging them. From here in Washington, D.C., I call on the free world to challenge the barbarism with force and conviction, without fear, united with our allies, chief amongst them, the United States of America.